Hey, what's up, guys? It's Deathstroke Sinker here with another division video. This one, I'll be going over beginner tips for all those that are starting off in the game or just about to buy the game. Once again, I'll say these are beginner tips, so if you've played a lot of the game, you will know these. If you have not played the game, then and you do know these, then that's that's pretty damn amazing, honestly. All right, number one, Dark Zone ranking. Now, other than the base game, there is another ranking system or leveling system, like some like to call it. This is the Dark Zone. This rank you will accrue experience just like in a base game, but it's only Dark Zone experience. So therefore, when you are in the Dark Zone, you only accrue experience for the Dark Zone. When you're out in the regular game and you're playing story missions, side missions, and encounters, you accrue experience for just that leveling of your character. So to keep these terms in mind, leveling applies to outside the Dark Zone, whereas Dark Zone rank or ranking applies to inside the Dark Zone. As I just said, experience is separated by the two locations. Also keep in mind that in the Dark Zone, if you do die, you will lose experience. So going rogue probably isn't your best bet, especially if you're just starting off in the game. Keep this in mind because you can actually de-rank or drop a rank in the Dark Zone as well if you lose enough experience. Number 2, Gathering Junk. This one is pretty common in our RPG games, so those that play a lot of RPG games will not be surprised, but simply put, pick up everything enemies drop. Just because the weapons and gear aren't an upgrade from your current items doesn't make it useless. You can mark all the gear and weapons in your backpack as junk and then bulk deconstruct or sell them to get either some well needed money or crafted materials. Trust me on this one, you will need lots of crafted materials after you've hit the level cap 30. Number 3, Multiple Ways to Use Skills. It certainly isn't a shock that you can deploy skills in multiple ways. You can fire them, place them, toss them, or even use them on yourself. The trick is the effectiveness of the deployment. Placing Dragon Breath turrets behind cover rather than on top, tossing airborne secret mines directly onto enemies, or even firing the first aid skill at the ground to heal multiple teammates are some examples. So put some thought into your deployment of skills. All placement methods can be viewed by scrolling down on the individual skill. Number 4. Help those in need. While it may be the end of the world, you shouldn't be stingy with those energy bars. While you're traveling around the city, random civilians will approach you in need of certain consumables. While this is certainly up to you, I would suggest offering the items because 9 out of 10 times, you'll be rewarded with a cosmetic item. As for the consumables, you're likely to find another one quickly in your travels. Number 5. Security Wing EXP Boost One of the things highest on your priority list is to upgrade the security wing. Soon as you're capable, complete the first security mission as this will grant you a perk that increases EXP gains by 10%. Security missions are the ones highlighted on your map with a blue shield. Once you've completed that mission, head back to the base of operations and upgrade the situation room to unlock the perk. It's automatically applied and always active, so that's all you need to do. Number 6. Missions on Hard Despite even my expectations, completing hard missions will not reward you with more EXP than completing the same mission on the normal difficulty. The only difference between the two difficulties, other than an obvious increase in difficulty, is the rewards earned. Playing missions on higher difficulties will scale the enemies and reward you with better weapons and gear, not EXP. Number 7, Side Missions. As I just said, higher difficulty missions don't reward you with more EXP. But if you're the kind looking for tons of EXP fast, side missions are the way to go. Or perhaps you're in need of blueprints. Guess what rewards you with these? Hell dives. I mean side missions. Side missions aren't your usual mindless entities just to distract you. I mean, they still are, but these are actually some of the most rewarding activities in the game. While they won't come close to the amount of EXP earned for completing a story mission, they are much faster to complete, which leads to you leveling faster. Then for each one you've completed, you're rewarded with a blueprint. When you complete all in a named area, you'll receive another blueprint, some additional EXP for returning to the safe house in that area, and an additional cybersyn tasking you with traveling to the next safe house, something you're going to do anyway. But by doing it this way, you're rewarded again with EXP. Number 8, Dark Zone Scales. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that the Dark Zone will scale with your level. Not your Dark Zone rank, but your agent's actual level. This includes both NPCs and other players. For example, the first player level bracket is 1 through 14. Therefore, the only players I can come across in the Dark Zone are between the levels of 1 and 14. As for the enemies, they are a minimum of level 10 in the Dark Zone 1, but as you go higher, they can climb to a maximum level of 30 in Dark Zone 6. You'll also notice that the Dark Zone vendors also adjust their stock according to your level. As your agent levels up, the stock in each shop becomes better and better, but also requires a higher Dark Zone rank. Keep this in mind when you're planning to play with your friends. 
If they are in a different player bracket, you will not be able to play with them. This information can also be found on the map when hovering the cursor over the dark zones and is located in the top right corner of the screen as well as when you're entering the dark zone. Number 9. Mods do affect your DPS. It's easy to be focused on the small bonuses like 30% magazine size and increases in headshot damage, but you should also watch your DPS. You could also be decreasing it. For example, trading an increase in rate of fire for a higher damage may actually offer less DPS than you think. Marginal drops are fine so long as they offer a more effective bonus like increase in optimal range or critical hit chance, but keep in mind on stats like DPS and reload speed. Number 10. Categorizing Damage Speaking of DPS, don't be mistaken by a weapon saying it's higher or lower damage than your current weapon. For example, marksman rifles and shotguns have some of the highest damage in game, so there's no way an LMG of equivalent level would come close to its damage. Therefore, you should compare weapons by their classes. SMGs with SMGs, assault rifles with assault rifles, and shotguns with shotguns. Number 11. The First Aid Skill as one of the first skills you unlock, the first aid is one of the best. Medkits are limited and the max you can currently carry is 5. On a difficult mission or if you're unfortunate enough, you can go through these rather quickly. Which is precisely why a self-healing ability only limited by a cooldown is a great asset to have. Just don't make a crutch with it like I did. Number 12. Combine Crafted Materials It isn't difficult to stock up on the various crafted materials, but as your character grows, you'll need less and less of these lower quality materials. As you gain more specialized or blue gear and weapons, start converting all of these greens into blue materials. This can be easily done at the crafting station found at the base of operations. Select the last set of blueprints on the list and start converting. Now once you've progressed to level 30 and acquired high end blueprints, I would suggest turning some but not all of those blue materials into golds. The reason I say don't convert all of them is because you may need them for future blueprints. For example, superior blueprints still use blue materials. What I tend to do is set a minimum amount of blue crafted materials like 50 electronics. Anything more than that, I convert to gold electronics. Number 13, recalibrating. A quick recalibration can turn a good backpack into a great backpack. Recalibrating allows you to reroll a certain attribute on a piece of gear, not weapons, like changing a turret duration boost into a secret mine damage boost. This gives you the ability to retool a certain gear item more towards certain builds. Note that once you've re-rolled an attribute on an item, you can't re-roll any others on that same item. The only price you pay is in credits, with the exception of high-end gear, which will cost you Phoenix credits. Number 14. Don't forget your consumables. Even knowing so, I can't tell you how many times I forgot about these battle altering items. Water, incendiary ammo, exploding ammo, each can make short work of a named elite enemy. Don't forget to use them and make sure to stay fully stocked by opening the various bags you find scattered around the city. And last but not least, number 15, unlock safe houses. While you're going around blowing up cleaners and saving the city, don't forget to take a moment to unlock the safe houses along the way. In fact, as you expand into each zone, this should be the first thing you do. Safe houses also serve as fast travel locations. Having them unlocked will save you lots of time when traveling. Alright guys and girls, that's it for right now, but remember I will be bringing more videos very soon, hopefully. I will definitely be doing that. Remember, you can also like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions or additional tips that you would like to add. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. All links are on screen as well as in the description below.